Hi guys, I'm obviously in my car right now because I've been meaning to make this video and I just haven't found the time or the quiet to do it. And my kids are on co-op right now. And so this is the time I have. So this is the time I'm gonna make the video. Even though it might not be the most professional looking, I just figured getting it done is better than not. This is going to be part one of, I'm thinking probably a, a three part video series talking or showing you the basics of crocheting. It's something that I've had requested a lot on Instagram and I don't feel like I am professional enough to teach it necessarily, but I figured I would give it a go, show you some of the basics. Before I get into the tutorial though, I just wanted to offer some encouragement. If you've never done any type of yarn, hand type crafting, um, I think the most important thing to know going into it is that it's a lot like learning to write. So if you are a mom like I am and you have like three or four or five year olds that are just learning to write, you just have to know it's awkward. You're not really gonna know how to hold it. It's not gonna look exactly how it seems like it's supposed to, but the best way to get better at crocheting is just to practice. And the great part about it is that it's an incredibly affordable craft to do. It is under $10, you could get started and just practice over and over with the same yarn even until you get more comfortable and confident enough to start an actual project. So just keep that in mind as you're going into it and you feel awkward and it doesn't look right, it just takes time. You just gotta keep with it. I am blessed to have been taught to crochet by my grandma when I was really, really young, probably under 10 years old. Um, she taught me the basics and I didn't do it much in my teen years, but really picked it back up again when I hit 20 and started having babies. And I just needed something as a creative outlet that I could do number one, when I was sitting and nursing or rocking a baby. And number two, that was easy to tuck away so it wouldn't get ruined. You know, with sewing, you have everything laid out and ironed and getting measured and cut. And it's not as easy to tuck it away quickly. Whereas your yarn and your hook, they're super easy to tuck away. Also, I can bring it anywhere with me. I bring it to co-op, bring it to church. Uh, I can do it inside the house, outside the house. It goes everywhere that I want it to. So I think it's a great skill to have and it's a fun creative outlet without having very much investment into it. I do want to talk a little bit about what you might need if you're going to start crocheting. So I went to the store the other day and just walked down the yarn aisle and sometimes it can seem overwhelming the amount of options there are to choose from. So I'm going to kind of show you what I would recommend if you're just getting started, you don't want to spend a bunch of money and you're not sure what to get, what I think would be the best option to start with. Normally I do not like to work with acrylic yarn. I just don't prefer it. But when you're just first starting out, there's no reason in my opinion to spend 10 or $20 when you can get something cheap to practice on. Don't worry too much about all of the different details about the yarn when you're first starting. Those are really gonna only matter a bunch once you start using specific patterns. But something that is around this size is a great starter yarn. And a little tip, if you're wondering what size hook to use, it will typically tell you on the label of the yarn what your options are. So I like this yarn because it's a little bit nicer than just the cheapy acrylic. It's not too big, it's not too small. This one's a little bit chunkier and I think it's just better to use something a little bit smaller when you're first practicing. So. Once you've picked your yarn, you can look at the hooks. I prefer the hooks that kind of have just the standard tip. I'll show you the other option. They did, actually didn't have any here, but I have some at home. Um, there is also kind of the padded handles. 
Some people swear they're way better. I actually strongly prefer to not have them, but that's totally up to you. What is more comfortable in your hand is more important than what I use. So I'm just going to get this little set of three. I know that they're the right size for the yarn that I picked, but you can see here there's so many options for different sizes and they're all pretty affordable depending on how many you want to get. And that is literally all you need to start. One hook, one type of yarn, and now we can go on to the tutorial. Okay, so now I have my yarn and I have my new set of hooks and I'm just gonna double check what size it wanted me to use or what size it recommended I used on the back of this label. So with this style of skein of yarn, you can either pull your thread from the middle or you can pull from the outside. I do both, it really just depends on my mood, but today I'm gonna pull from the middle and I like to just pull out a few feet at a time just so that I have it easy to access and I'm not constantly having to break to pull it out. So I'm going to show you how to make a slip knot. This is going to be the first thing you do for the majority of your crochet projects. There's lots of different ways to make it, but the biggest thing is to make sure you have at least three or four inches on your tail end, which is the part that is the cutoff end of your yarn, not the part that is feeding to the rest of your skein. So get your slip knot made and then we'll put it on our hook. So once you have your slip knot on your hook, you don't want it to be super, super loose, but you do need to be able to move it up and down easily. And again, this is just something that as you practice, you'll learn, oh, that was way too tight or that was way too loose. So slip it on, pull the short tail just to make it so it's pretty snug, but that you can still easily move it up and down because you're gonna need to pull your hook through when you're doing stitches. All right, so now we are gonna learn the first type of stitch, which is called a chain. And basically what we're gonna do for the chain is you are wrapping around your yarn from the back of your hook towards the front, and then you're hooking it and pulling it through the loop that you already have on your hook. So there's only ever gonna be one loop on your hook at a time when you're making a chain. And this is, again, it's something that it just, you might have your own style. You might hold things differently than I do. I, as you can see, tend to pass the tail end back and forth between hands as I'm looping and pulling, but other people do it differently. So whatever feels comfortable for you is totally fine and it works. When you're first learning to do your chain, something you'll notice is that you'll either have some stitches that are really loose, some that are really tight. And I think it's important just to take the time to practice this and make it so that it is consistent. When I'm teaching one of my kids to crochet, they spend a long time kind of practicing chains and they'll have three, four, five, six foot long chains. Um, you know, sometimes just because they're doing it over and over again to make sure that they really have the rhythm down. The great thing about crocheting is that you can pull your chain out and you can start again and you haven't wasted anything. You know, if you're baking or you're sewing or something else and you mess up, you've kind of wasted whatever material or ingredients that you've used but with crocheting you can just reuse it and you can practice again over and over without having lost anything so don't be afraid to switch to a different hook if it's more comfortable i actually ended up switching to a smaller one because i felt like that one was a little bit too big um, but just work on doing your chain till you get really consistent stitches as far as the 
looseness of them and the spacing of them. And once you feel like you've gotten that down, we will move on to doing a second row with a single crochet. Okay, once you feel like you have mastered the chain, you have pretty uniform stitches going across, we're gonna start on the second row. And when you are going to start a second row, you're almost always gonna skip that first chain closest to you, the loop that's on your hoop. And you're gonna put your hook in the top loop of that second stitch. So you can see here, it's just one little loop that I'm putting my hook into. And then I'm gonna wrap the yarn around pull it through that loop so that now I have two on my hook and then I'm going to do it one more time so I have three and pull it through so I'm back to one. That is called a single crochet. The next stitch is this one right here. Wrapping it around, pulling one more loop through so I have two. Wrapping it around and then pulling it through both of those loops. It helps if you kind of turn your hook so it's facing downwards and that is my second single crochet. So doing the second row on the chain, in my opinion, it's kind of the most challenging. Once you get to the third row, the stitches are just a lot more established, so it's easier to get them in and out. But again, don't be afraid to pull out and redo this row over and over again Once you do get to the end of this row, do your last stitch the same as the rest of them. And then in order to make your project stay square, you're almost always gonna wanna add a chain on the end of the row. So just like you did in your initial chain, you're just wrapping it around, pulling it through, and then turning the whole piece around. And now you're gonna be working onto the third row, but this time the stitch you go into has two loops. So skipping that chain, just like you did before, going under two loops, wrapping it around and pulling it through, wrapping it around and pulling it through both, and you're back to one. So it's still a single crochet, it's just now the stitch that you're working into has two loops that you need to make sure that you get under with your hook. I hope this video was helpful in getting you started on your crocheting journey, helping you figure out what you need, how to make a chain, how to do a single crochet. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or even better, message me on Instagram at Beth DeClerc and I'd be happy to help. Have a great day.